Welcome to Chemical Engineering World. In this video we will be going to discuss about industrial fire and safety. First of all I would like to thanks, Dr. Prem Jain, Honorable Member of Fire Safety Association of India. He has provided proper guideline for industrial fire and safety. Industrial fire safety is the set of practices intended to reduce the destruction caused by fire. Industrial fire safety measures include those that are intended to prevent ignition of an uncontrolled fire, and those that are used to limit the development and effects of a fire after it starts. Causes of industrial fire accidents Combustibles near equipment that generates heat, flame, or sparks. Electrical systems that are overloaded, resulting in hot wiring or connections. Flammable liquids and aerosols. Fireplace chimneys not properly or regularly cleaned. Personal ignition sources like matches, lighters. Equipment that generates heat and utilizes combustible materials. And most important thing is. Unsafe conditions that covers. The job itself, psychological conditions. Now what are the significance of industrial fire safety? Industrial fire hazards causes a great loss to both the employer and employee, that's it is having importance. Cost of compensation. Cost of medical aid. Cost of training a new worker. Cost of the damage of machinery. Cost of supervision and inspections. Cost of investigation. Cost of the lost time. Cost of spoilage of materials. Cost to the government in terms of factory inspectors, and public health services. Safety inspection procedures. Safety audit, subjects each area of a company's activity to a systematic critical examination with the object of minimizing loss. Safety survey. Safety inspection. A routine scheduled inspection of a unit or department, which may be carried out by a fire safety representative from within the unit. Fire Protection and Prevention Safe Work Practices Reporting and Extinguishing a Fire The fire department and area supervisor will be notified when a fire is spotted. All workers will be alerted and evacuated. The pass method will be used to extinguish the fire by those employees who have been properly trained. The area will be evacuated immediately if the fire is large. Next is Fire Protection Practices before each project begins, the project manager or designee will contact the local fire department and determine whether any variations from the company's standard fire prevention procedures are required. No smoking signs will be posted in all regulated areas. Only approved containers will be used to store flammable or combustible materials. All containers will be bonded together and grounded when transferring flammable or combustible liquids. All work areas will be kept free of debris and other combustible materials. Fire extinguishers will be stored at a distance no greater than 10 feet from torch users. A fire extinguisher, rated not less than 10 B, will be provided within 50 feet of the location where more than 5 gallons of flammable liquids or 5 pounds of a flammable gas are used on a job site. Fire watch will be posted for 2 hours. Next is flammable and combustible liquid storage practices. No more than 25 gallons of flammable and combustible liquids will be stored outside approved safety cabinets in indoor locations. Gasoline will not be used as a solvent for cleaning. Buildings or structures containing flammable liquids or gases must be constructed of fire-resistant material. Flammable liquids or gases will be kept away from heat and ignition sources including welding work or any other operation involving flames or sparks. All containers will be labeled in accordance with OSHA's hazard communication standard. Types of fire. Fires are classified as A, B, C, D or K based on the type of substance that is the fuel for the fire, as follows. Class A, fires involving ordinary combustibles, such as paper, trash, some plastics, wood and cloth. A rule of thumb is if it leaves an ash behind, it is a class A fire. 
Class B, fires involving flammable gases or liquids, such as propane, oil and gasoline. Class C, fires involving energized electrical components. Class D, fires involving metal. A rule of thumb is if the name of the metal ends with the letter ZUM, it is a class D fire. Examples of this are aluminium, magnesium, beryllium and sodium. Class D fires rarely occur in the roofing industry. Class K, fires involving vegetable or animal cooking oils or fats, common in commercial cooking operations. Now most important is types of fire extinguishers. Starting with carbon dioxide. Class of fire extinguishers are B and C. If used in confined areas, will create oxygen deficiency, not effective in windy conditions, can cause frostbite during discharge, typically not used in roofing industry. Next is dry chemical powder. Class of fire extinguishers are A, B and C. Generally good for use in roofing industry. Dry powder extinguishers are similar to dry chemical except that they extinguish the fire by separating the fuel from the oxygen element or by removing the heat element of the fire triangle. Water and foam. Water and foam fire extinguishers extinguish the fire by taking away the heat element of the fire triangle. Foam agents also separate the oxygen element from the other elements. Water extinguishers are for class A fires only. They should not be used on class B or C fires. The discharge stream could spread the flammable liquid in a class B fire or create a shock hazard on a class C. Now most important is Electrical safety. Electrical sources are common causes of fires, shocks, and burns. Improperly maintained or operated electrical equipment may short, arc, or overheat creating an ignition point. Extension cords, outlets, and surge protectors. Fire doors and wedges. If used properly, fire doors contain fires and protect exit passages. Fire doors can be identified by a rating plate or the presence of a closing device. A fire door can be held open with an approved door mechanism that will automatically close the door in the event of a fire. Never place objects in the swing of a fire door. Even non-fire rated doors can help stop the spread of fire and smoke. Close them when leaving at the end of the day, or when evacuating from a fire. Do not disable the closing device on any door. Do not hold a fire door open with a wedge, wire, string, or other unapproved methods. A chair can be used to hold open an office door, but should be closed when leaving the office. Do not panic if fire doors close when an alarm goes off. This is normal and you can still exit through these doors, if they are designated emergency exit routes. Sprinkler systems Sprinkler systems are an effective method for extinguishing fires before they grow out of control. It takes as little as 155 degrees to activate a sprinkler and release pressurized water. Only the sprinklers that are directly contacted by high heat from a fire will activate, open, and shower the fire with